Hi, welcome to Artsy Soul. I am your host, Adrian Tomidis. I am a ceramic artist that works primarily with the human figure and animals. And in this video, I show you how I put together a head, a human head from scratch. I hope you enjoy it. And please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and hit subscribe. Making a wall-mounted clay figure. I start working with a sculptural base that I cover with paper and tape and then I start adding clay to form a ball uh, which is basically going to define where the skull is going to be and uh, where the front of the face is going to be. I add uh, the chin area and the neck area and then I begin to measure based on the traditional methods of uh, measuring the face, uh, defining where the eyes are going to be, where the nose is going to be, and where the mouth is going to be. And I do this very roughly. Uh, this is really more of a sketching process for me where I start adding different layers of clay and as I add different layers everything becomes a little bit more defined each time so that I can work on one side and modify it um, or define it a little bit and then I go to the other side of the face and I modify it a little bit but it's not quite right so I just keep adding and the whole process is really just uh, an exercise in uh, correcting because what I do on one side it's um, you know I have to balance it out and I have to match it on the other side so it is a process uh, that that I just um, that's just how I work um, some people just um, work on one area and define it very quickly I just layer my work and I think it comes from my painting background where I, I like to layer my painting so I approach sculpture in the same manner where I'm just layering uh, the clay over and over until I get the desired result. I also work on everything at the same time. I might work a little bit on one eye, but then I, I start moving around basically. So I do a little bit on the eyes, I do a little bit on the mouth, a little bit on the nose, and then go to the forehead, go to the side of the head, and always checking proportions and always checking relationships um, with lines and shadows and um, shapes. And I just, keep moving around and um, I, I look at all the angles and once I have the basics uh, down I pull the base um, it, I, I usually get the ones that are screwed on so I can unscrew it and then I just basically put the head on a piece of foam and that allows me to be able to turn the head in all different angles and look at it from underneath uh, look at it from the side look at it from the top and that's where i really start correcting a lot of the things that i see that are wrong with the piece so i feel like most of what i'm doing from the, the start is sort of correcting i i start off with a basic um you know, set up and as I'm working with it, I'm adding and I'm correcting and I'm add, I keep adding and I keep correcting. So, and that's why I move around a lot because I might do something on one side of the head and that might look right, but then it doesn't match the other side. So I'm always trying to balance both sides and trying to make them uh, the same as much as possible. And at this point, I'm really not looking at the expression or what the story behind this character is, is I'm just really trying to find that that um, accuracy. And um, that's what I'm striving for at this level. I work on the nose and I work on the nostrils and I try to make sure that they are as believable as possible so that the shape is a teardrop shape. It's not just a hole. And um, they're also lined up with the um, inner part of the eye. That's one of those measurement things that I was talking about. 
And this part is always kind of awkward and funny to me because I feel like I am cleaning somebody's nostrils out. Um, so it's, it just always looks really funny and awkward, but um, it has to be done. You'll see some different tools used throughout the video. This one here is got a rubber tip so that uh, I can clean up some of the marks that I'm making as I'm working on the face. And um, it's not necessarily what I do to finish the piece um, because I do different things to really smooth it out. But this just kind of gets rid of some of the marks that are kind of getting in the way of seeing if I have any bumps or lumps or things that I'm trying to get rid of. So it's just a nice little tool to use um, as I'm working and making progress and trying to clean things up. Something really interesting that I wanted to share is that I wear gloves to protect my hands because I was finding that they were cracking a lot and they were um, becoming just really destroyed with the clay and I had somebody recommend me using gloves and at first I was very hesitant and I didn't really think you could wear gloves and still get the detail that you want and, and just the finish that you wanted but I've actually gotten used to it and I find that it, they work quite well and the rubber finish gives me the ability to have a to use the tip or you know just use the surface to to um, finish the clay as well to smooth it out so you'll see me in different parts of the video just using my fingers to smooth out an area and um, you know the gloves work quite well for that so at this point I am redefining different parts of the face and um, at this point I'm also I'm, I'm adding more flesh and I'm, I'm just adding more surface because I, I see that it needs it and as I'm doing that um, the piece begins to talk to me and this is the part that is gets really interesting because I feel like this is how a character is born I don't always start with a very specific idea in mind I have a general concept that I might want to explore but I don't really have sometimes I sketch and I try to follow my sketch but I find that you know there's an intuitive process behind it that you just kind of you know feed off the work the work talks to you um, and and you just feed off of it and um, in this particular case you know as I'm, I was working on the face I, I it was very clear that there was an expression that wanted to come through and as I'm, I was adding the flesh around uh, the cheekbone it just kind of came out that one side was going to make a little bit of a smirk with the mouth and the eye was going to be the eyebrow was going to be raised a little bit so I started making those markings and obviously I needed to make modifications because if you're raising your eyebrow now your eye cavity is not going to be the same as the other side so um, I, I started to make those changes they're just slight they're not very dramatic um, but they need to be noticeable. So I needed to make those adjustments and that's what you see me doing here.
The next thing I work on after finishing the eyes or cleaning up the eyes is adding eyebrows. Um, I, they really do complete the expression of the face and they really frame the eyes uh, to complete that expression. So it's just one of my favorite things to work on. Turning the head upside down and uh, working, or just not even upside down, but you know, just looking at the head from all different angles is so important because that's where you can see where things are off. Sometimes you might look at a head um, from the front and something's not quite right, but you know, all the measurements, everything kind of lines up and you just can't tell what it is. And once you turn the head upside down, you know, or you look at it from above, you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like this, I've missed this. And so that gives me an opportunity to just uh, bring all those things that are out of balance into balance. Once I have all the parts of the head together, I screw it back on and I take a step back and I look at this character to see if it's believable and to have continue to have this dialogue about, you know, what it wants to be and what it wants to say and what I can do to further that narrative. Um, I also start hollowing it out. So this is when it gets really interesting because um, I dissect the piece. I, I basically cut it in half and separate it and um, just take it out from the base so that I can hollow it out and score it, score both sides and join them back together um, so they're back to how I had it but I can now manipulate this piece and I don't need to have it on the stand I could just have it um, 
lying flat and I'm able to just clean up all the seams and um, one of the things that I noticed when I took a step back is that it looked a little bit stiff and it would help the character and the narrative of this character which is going to be a uh, cupid it would work better if the head was a little bit tilted and for me to do that now that it's off the base I'm able to cut off the head sounds a little drastic but um, it's not and then do the same scoring process and reattach it in this process I've also realized that this is going to be a piece that's going to be on the wall and so I'm already planning ahead and trying to think about where the how it's going to be hanging and how it's going to be facing so that um, it's not going, you're not going to be able to see the entire torso area or the entire chest area. It's just going to be just part of the shoulder. Just working on that part of uh, the sculpture to make sure that it looks complete and observing that because this is going to be a um, Cupid piece. And again, this is not wasn't planned. It just sort of started to come alive as I started to work on it. And once I started to work on the bottom part, I realized that it had a little bit of uh, the shape of a heart. So that's something I'm going to be working on a little bit further to make to tie it into um, the narrative a little bit better. One of the things that you see me doing here is um, cleaning up the seams. So I joined the two halves and I, a lot of times it works very easily where I just um, add a little bit more clay, clean it up and the seams are gone. Sometimes, depending if the piece is a little drier or just not as moist, I end up having to do what you just saw me doing, which is basically um, take a tool and um, remove some of the clay on the seam area and then press fresh clay and just work it into the head or you know the body to just make it seamless and that really does get rid of the seam completely so it's just one of the one little trick that I learned in one of the workshops with uh, Philip Ferro and that was really fantastic because I use it now and it really does work. So now I get to put the head back and before I commit the position, I'm able to play around with it a little bit until I find just the right angle. Then I go ahead and score it and attach it back together, clean up the area, define the jaw area a little bit better and just make sure that it's really attached. The last thing I would want is for that head to come off and roll off the table, which has happened in the past. So I just make sure that it's really, really attached. So now that I have the head attached to the shoulders and I'm happy with the position of the head and the position of the shoulders, it's time to finish the head. And 
it's time to decide, make some decisions about what's going around uh, the head. Is it going to be a headpiece of some sort? Is it going to be fabric? Is it going to be an object? Is it going to be another animal? Or is it just going to be hair? And in this case, because I'm thinking about Cupid, I wanted it to be a very playful, loose um, hair treatment. So I wanted the hair to be very chunky and to be very wavy and have a lot of movement. So I started to um, put together the little pieces that you see here and I was very careful to make sure that they did not look like horns because I've worked with horns in the past and it's um, you know very easy to have hair that kind of resembles horns. So in this case, I wanted to make sure that, you know, it didn't really look like horns. So I just modified it enough so that it didn't have that look, obviously. And um, the other thing that I thought would be interesting would be to add um, hearts floating around in the hair, um, just because it, it would make it more playful as well. So that's but that's how I decided to finish this piece and one of the things that I don't show here that I'm also doing because it's going to be on the wall the bottom part of um, and I'll show a picture at the end but the bottom part of uh, where the shoulders end there's going to be a hook that will have a chain with a heart dangling on at the bottom so that should really create a lot of visual interest as well I just wanted to point out that the video is almost 30 minutes long and it's condensing about eight hours worth of time spent modeling the clay. I am finishing the head with one last heart and then I'm adding the last details on the eyes which is basically just adding the iris and adding uh, the pupil which is just a nice touch that I like to have on my eyes when the head is big enough when it's too small I can't really get that many details in there and um, then I just wait for it to dry so that I can smooth out the surface with the cloth or uh, sponge and I just work around in circles uh, just throughout the entire face or surface area just to make it really smooth. Now it's time to sit back and wait for the clay to dry. This is a process that I don't like to rush because it can create a lot of cracks and potential issues with the sculpture. So here's the piece completely finished once it's been fired, underglazed, and other embellishments have been added. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at artsy.soul and also hit subscribe and share it with your friends. Feel free to comment and I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.